Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to the show. We're going to talk about Power Book 4 episode three force we're gonna give the first reaction to early this morning i uh, appreciate everybody for coming through um ready for me to break it on down and talk about the episode and give it my review my score i'm gonna hit it with the most go let you know what i think about the episode and why so let's stay tuned and of course don't forget to put the hashtag Jmore Reviews in the comments so that you can get entered to win that $10 cash app giveaway. I appreciate all the support and I'm going to share the love. So definitely go ahead, hit that up in the comments, get entered to win. You got to be in it to win it like Tommy Egan up in this piece. So go ahead and do that and uh let's make it happen now um this episode we're in the third episode of uh, book four just like that um is moving along pretty fast you know time flies and we starting to learn a lot more about what's going on the characters the story all of that stuff so um you know it's starting to get a little interesting uh, a little shadiness is starting to you know creep up as always and so uh you know it's interesting to see what's going on and why um so let me get into a couple things right quick also don't forget to put in uh you know to help get to this 30k subs i'm almost there um so you know if you already sub don't forget to share the the videos uh subscribe all that good stuff uh where you already subscribe just share like and also you can put in that hashtag who is rojas if you ain't able to watch live and i'm gonna try to do something for those that are not able to watch live so you know go ahead and bang that let's make it work um what's up sabrina how you doing appreciate you for coming through um you know no no problem don't forget to put in the who is rojas let's get it that's right ray what's up kendall how you doing <clears throat> sabrina what's up you trying to get into the show i appreciate it you made it you made it you here so i appreciate you for coming through uh you know and of course everybody don't forget to put in uh hashtag j more reviews so that you can get into to win uh you know some of this little money up in here so let's make it happen all right so this episode was pretty good we see tommy he it picks up exactly where it last left off with him talking with liliana in the kitchen about that product that he found turned out it wasn't just one brick but it was a few bricks up in there and he made her the offer that she can't refuse so they end up getting together hooking up and we see back at the house they end up cooking up the product together they done made a 50 50 split she took off her little you know what i'm saying pantalones boy liliana looking good up in there boy Tommy may have to, you know, forget about that scar for a minute. You know, don't worry about that gash on her face and worry about that gash somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, <laughs> um, I think they end up may messing around, be messing around, but not nothing serious like, uh, you know, he caught feelings for Liliana and, and now he in love with her. But, you know, they start sampling the product, drinking on some oil. Who knows what may happen, man. Them juices start flowing. 
Next thing you know, hey, they they may not, you know, she don't like white boys and you know, he ain't like he wasn't feeling her. They might start feeling each other. Who knows? Anyway, um it was pretty cool to see them kind of bond on old times talking um damian robinson that's a good point why they was bonding and talking she was asking about ghosts he told the ghost was dead she was like you do it he said no nah. but he didn't give her too much info and say well no nah, actually it was uh to week no nah, he she wouldn't have known who Tariq was anyway but he could have said it was his son and that would have been more than enough info but I, he didn't have to, and I don't blame him. I wouldn't have told her none of that either. So, you know, anyway, um, it was all good. Um, I think it was a good episode. And uh, so they end up getting the product. She 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 know how to cook. Tommy like, damn, if I knew you had these type of skills, you know, if I knew you had these type of skills, I would have moved you up into the cook room. You know, so... You never know what you don't know, but uh, turn out she got a little, know how to cook a little, you know, a roast con snow yo, <laughs> a roast con snow yo up in there. And she she was making it, uh, you know what I'm saying, a little booger sugar, fresh, on demand, cooking it all night. She was tired, wasn't no coffee. Next thing you know, you know what I'm saying, they had to take a little, little bump. Uh, to get that little, you know, energy boost, get that power up. But, uh, you know, it seemed like they a good little combo. Uh, he went to go meet up with the Flynn family, and she was down to go there with him uh, as his little backup. And so uh, who knows how it's going to all play out. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, I think that's going to be his little connect. Now, one thing that I don't understand about this is, how in the world are they going to re-up? I guess he'll figure that out when he get there. But so she got all that product. But if they go ahead and, you know, sell it all wholesale, then everybody going to want to re-up. He don't have a connect to re-up from. What are you going to say? This was a one-hit wonder. So I guess he'll figure out his next move when he get there. Um, he'll figure he got enough money. He'll he'll make that move when the time come, I'm guessing. So, uh, we'll see. But uh, you know, she she was there, she was down, and so uh we'll see what's up. Um tell Samira, you say I like the chemistry between Tommy and Liliana. I, I like the chemistry as well. Um I think that was pretty cool. Um they both understand each other, got history. And, uh, you know, I think that that would be pretty good to see how it's going to turn out. Um, Kendall, I do like that exchange between Pauly and Liliana. When they was at the meet, he was like, hey, let's go out to dinner. She like, you need to shave that mustache. So, I don't know. Maybe she the mustache just tickles her or something. I don't know. And uh, you ladies know what I mean by getting tickled with, you know, at, the, at, the, at certain places. But anyway... <laughs> She told him to shave that mustache and we'll see. So, you know, um, one thing about her, though, is that she ain't really shy about that that buck 50 that she got. She she don't have her hair covering it up like how Mary J used to be with her little scar on her face, which is not even close to a buck 50. So, um, you know, she is what she is with it. And she own it. <clears throat> so we'll see. Brillo, you say you out there in Vegas. Didn't watch yet, but wanted to show love. That's what's up, man. Go ahead and win some money on, on the, uh, you know, on the, on the pick a winner out there with that in Vegas, man. Lots of wages, man. Good luck to you, man. That's what's up. <clears throat> you know, we see Tommy over there betting. So we'll see what's up. Gina, you say you cover your scar. I mean, a lot of people do. People are self-conscious in life, man. It's natural, man. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Mary J, she don't do it no more. Um, you know, we see Liliana don't give a damn. And that one, boy, 
that's that's a big one. Uh, Michael K. Williams, he did, <laughs> if he tried to cover his up, he wouldn't be able to see. But you know, sometimes that give a person character. So you know, we all got to do what we can, live with what we got to live with, and make the most of what we got to make the most of. You know, so it is what it is. Um, Hen Dog is back. That's what's up, Hen Dog. Congrats to winning the uh, contest last night. So, you know. Um, Gina, you say you don't like. Hey, you know, it ain't your fault if it's been since two years old. Don't worry about it. You all good. Your, your personality shine more than that anyway. So, you know, it don't even matter. Um. You say Catherine Reese said Liliana scar like a river on the map. Damn. Like the Mississippi River. That thing go the whole length of her face. But you know, she don't she she don't I don't know, man. It it is a big one. I ain't gonna lie. But she kinda it almost is all um, I don't know. I can't say it's forgettable. But it is uh she She's able to kind of overcome it in a way, I guess. Eric Iverson, what's up? Got a feeling Tommy and Liliana going to hook up. I think so, too. I was just saying that. Um, working together in close quarters with that sugar in the system, um, anything may happen, and I won't be surprised uh, if it does and when it does. Definitely. Uh, let me get a little drizank right quick. I'm going to play a video for uh, Brillo and uh, Iverson coming through with the Super Chat. I appreciate y'all for coming through. Here go a quick video right quick. Я зроблю йому пропозицію, від якої він не зможе відмовити. Ти прийшов у мій дім і просиш скоїти вбивство за гроші. Ти просиш ти без поваги. Welcome to the family. Um... Another thing, man, we see that Tommy is trying to make Chicago. So the way that that show is set up is that the CBI runs the south side and the north side has the uh, the, the Irish family over here. Um, so, of course, this is all for TV show. They don't want to use real gang or real gang information. So, for the sake of a TV show, that's how it is. Okay. So, they were saying, Liliana was telling them about how the blacks and whites and Hispanics don't cross, don't meet up, whatever the case. And Tommy wasn't trying to hear it. Uh, he had, you know, his ideas set on being the bridge between the gap trying to you know bring everybody together under the banner of making money um but of course this ain't gonna play out right and when when diamond he talked diamond into coming to the meeting with the flynn family of uh, you know he brought up you know flynn brought up old stuff tommy like man what's up with all this he like it's history new guy it's history. Yeah, it's history. That was funny. That was funny. It's history, new guy. It's history. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was dope. Um, and so, we know, we get to see uh, that even though Flynn had, had uh, them come through and did that, that really his mind is made up on still probably trying to get revenge on Diamond. Even though, you know, he said he put nine of Diamond's people in the ground. Um, you know, Diamond didn't retaliate, and he said that's because I would have put nine more of you in the ground. In the ground. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, we get to see a little bit more about the brothers. Um, they was uh, first 
I don't know where they was when they went to this baseball field. Um, that's the one thing about Chicago. It's so much stuff, man. It's it's kind of hard to know exactly everywhere they went. But they were at this uh, this baseball field, and you know the younger brother Janar want to try to make something happen for the kids, build up, try to do something good in the hood. And, you know, Diamond ain't really tripping. Um, this dude ear that got chewed up like old dog dog food up in here. Golly. His ear, man. That's some good special effects right there because that ain't his real ear. That ear look nasty, boy. I don't think he can hear what I'm saying. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Anyway. So, <laughs> they was talking or whatever. And... He's still going back and forth with Diamond about what they should do, what they should not do, all this other stuff. And <clears throat> he getting a little frustrated because Diamond still out there trying to do things his way. And like he said, yeah, you may have gave me that top spot, but I'm the one that made us, you know, relevant. So, you know... um, I don't think he's ready to to give that credit to his brother yet, you know. And then what's tripped out is later we saw when they was uh, at the little boxing match <laughs> that I thought that this was real, so they fooled me. So later we saw Tommy came and uh, came to see them uh, Diamond at this little boxing gym. And while they were at the boxing gym, uh, Diamond, he was trying to say he want to set up the meeting with the Flynn family. And then little bro, Jannar, like, no, nah, you know, ain't nothing happening unless I say so. I'll run this. And so Tommy, you know, in the middle, he kind of instigated a little bit. But little bro said, let's go and handle this in the ring. So... You know, I don't know what he was going to do Rub with that ear. He couldn't, he knew, I guess he wasn't worried about big bro pulling the Tyson because that ear had already then got chewed on. So I guess he like, man, I don't give a damn. You chew on my ear. Like I it ain't going to hurt. Yeah, I'll be doing me a favor. <laughs> anyway, they get in the ring. This dude start trying to tackle him, do some karate. He tried to do the damn Cobra Kai. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. And, you know, in the end, he got his ass whooped. It looked like Diamond took him out fair and square. But what ended up happening, as we later learned at the end, at first I thought he was playing it off, is that he let him win. So, I'm going to ask y'all, what do you guys think? Do you think he really played it off and lost? Or, you know, did he play it off and lose on purpose? Or did he get beat? If you think he played it off and lost on purpose, put a one. Put a one, uh, a one P. And if he, uh, you know got beat and then he you know tried to make it seem like he didn't lose on purpose but he really did put a 2p eric iverson you say yeah he got cauliflower ears i box and a lot of guys have it from getting punched a lot <laughs> damn see most of the time i see people with cauliflower ears from wrestling and being put in a headlock and different stuff and uh that cauliflower ear come from uh, loss of circulation in the ear that's like why they always have in high school them wearing that headgear but uh, I ain't never noticed it too much in boxing unless they used to wrestle but that's what's up um, you say uh, we got so Kush said he lost on purpose BB say he got beat with saving face Got a one, one P, one P, one P. Look like everybody think that he uh, was holding back. 
Ronald Cameron, you think Diamond held back too? I think Diamond did hold back some because he could have hit him with another punch at the end and didn't. He ain't want to beat him that bad. So that's true. Got Crafty think that he actually lost and tried to save face. BB. Jocelyn think he got beat. Uh-oh, look like we got about the first half of people think that he got beat. The second half think maybe he didn't. Well, the first half think he didn't get beat. And the second half of people mostly think he did. Maurice said Diamond won. Yeah, Diamond definitely held back. He could have kept pummeling his brother, Nelly Mack. Yeah, definitely. He definitely could have. And, uh, you know, um, it, you know, it's interesting. Now, what I was wondering is what? why is he trying to hold back? What is he trying to prove? What did he gain by having Diamond... Uh, be in charge and like they said half the crew gonna go with diamond the other half gonna go with him what did he gain from that now he did say in the end everybody gonna roll with him is he gonna get his brother killed is he gonna set him up i don't understand what that angle is i have to think about that and you know maybe uh do a video about it but as of now i mean unless he gonna try to get his brother killed or set up i don't understand what that what that angle is you know um so that's one thing i'm interested to see play out um say not if his christmas gets canceled i know that's right um so you know we'll see um I did make a video earlier this week, um, but I just made it public. I think today, um, people that were uh, part of the membership, they saw it already. But it was about that cop in episode one. And I said, where is uh, where does he stand? What is it about? Jimmy Levy said, man, stop lying. You know everything. <laughs> I wish. I don't know. Now, Rojas knows, but I don't. No, I'm just playing, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. I'm watching like everybody else. Um, But that was funny, Jimmy. Jimmy Levy. Um, so, let's see. Um. So that cop that came in the barber shop, I made a video about that. Y'all should check it out. Um, but now we learn that dude is a crooked cop, and he working with the Flynn family, and he taking taking payola. He on that payola. So I don't know, man. What's up with dude? Um. I thought that he actually was a legit cop for a minute. But then I thought he would have been maybe a a shady but legit cop. You know, maybe willing to do some things to bend the law like like uh, DBS. But in the end, was trying to do the right thing, maybe. And for him to end up taking paper... And trying to do this, I don't know, man. Um, that was a surprise a little bit. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up getting killed. This dude, man, he trying to play by taking this money by the Flynn's. But then he trying to take out the competition for him. I don't see that ending well for him. And I think that it's going to come to light for the Flynn's. Because, you know, he was trying to work with Diamond. And then Diamond is going to find out you got the cops. 
You know what I'm saying? The Chicago Ray Ray. <laughs> they gonna find out uh, that you've been putting the cops on me. And you trying to work with me with the dope. And of course, it's probably gonna come out at the exact moment when things is going good and they probably was starting to trust each other. And then he realized, damn, you've been playing me the whole time. So that's going to be messed up. We see Tommy brother. We learn his brother in a whole heap of trouble. Now, I also made a video this week about Tommy brother. And I thought it was a little weird that Tommy kept giving him money. Tommy did say that he washed you know, laundromat. He said laundromat, which I thought he was being, you know, using slang for, you know, cleaning money. But he told him I used to own laundromats and sold it. So I was thinking, okay, he don't want to tell him all his business yet. Then the brother tried to give him the money back. So Tommy like, you know, hey, what's your number? This dude damn near 200 grand in debt. So how are you 200 grand in debt in a restaurant? You're not paying your bills at all? This dude serving diamond steaks up in this piece. The hell? This something ain't right. And then he holding on to this house. Something that is he probably going to get a second mortgage or sell it or something. Because, you know, although he showed the nostalgia of him and Tommy getting their heights marked up when they was living there at different points as kids. Um, he said, you know, I guess we, we was never here at the same time. So Tommy was there when he was younger and he came after Tommy into that house at least. But, you know, um, this dude... He definitely shady. He definitely is not trustworthy. It's definitely something fishy would do to be in so much debt. And all you got is a damn restaurant business. Like, that don't make any sense to be in that much debt over some damn restaurant business. So, you know, yeah. No, nah, Nelly Mac say, no, nah, Tommy actually had laundry mats. Yeah, I know. That was they front. I remember. But I'm just saying, I thought he was actually going to tell him at first that. But yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember. Um. So, let me go ahead and uh, get y'all my ratings. Let's see. Pull up this thing. I get y'all my rating for this episode. Where is that, my? All right, here we go. So, we got four categories with a top score of 25 per category, add up to 100. First category, um, we got visuals and cinematography. So, you know, the camera that's used the locations, all of that good stuff. And so uh, I think they use a lot of good locations. Although some spots I do know and it didn't add up to where, you know, they were showing uh, just like they showed him leaving that bar or whatever from the Flynn uh, meetup. And then the next thing you know, he getting pulled over in like five minutes by the girl and he at the planetarium downtown but yeah that's nowhere near each other <laughs> but it's still cool to see a lot of real places on the screen represented and i'm pretty sure most shows are this way it's just that you know everybody is not able to recognize every show on tv like that so you wouldn't be able to notice it. So with that being said, to see all the places, real places, 
um, different locations around the city. It's, you know, not just all on the set, although some things are on a set, a lot of it isn't. And so uh, I think that the visuals and cinematography is good, the good cameras. Um, it looks like a movie still. And so I would give it a 20. Storyline and plot is getting interesting. I like how they're trying to develop the story, trying to flush out some of the characters and their intricacies so we can learn more about the characters and what's going on. And uh, this episode was, I like this episode. Um, it was a corny scene in there that I thought was pretty corny. And that's when the guy was supposed to be buying drugs and he was DJing and he was sitting there with his shirt off tweaking with the girl and then he pulled a gun out and this and that was corny but you know that's that's the world Tommy live in so with that being said uh other than that I really wasn't uh too many things that stick out that was kind of corny with that episode and uh this episode storyline and plot I would give this about a 20 for this episode. It was pretty good. Um, special effects and makeup. Um, it's not too many special effects in this show. Makeup, costumes, all that stuff. Uh, they always dress pretty good. Tommy wear the same damn clothes wherever he go. Um, but <laughs> like Liliana Scar, that really looks real. Dude's ear, that really looks real and gross as well. A um, couple of things, when they was fighting, um, you know, his eyes still swole up from when he got kidnapped. And different things in the little, you know, bumps and bruises. So, for what they're doing with the show, it wasn't too much. They didn't show anybody get shot, although they did allude to old boy getting killed that was tweaking. Um overall special effects costume makeup all that stuff was pretty good and i would give it a 20 and then uh entertaining and fun factor um it was entertaining it was pretty good um it wasn't as good as the first two episodes but it wasn't bad um i liked it and i would probably give it a 20 as well which would give it a total score of an eight or 80 so I mean that's very good very respectable um, so uh, of course if somebody said a seven and a half up to an eight and a half um, I could see that but I would give it an 80 or you know round it to an eight um, so I definitely think that um, Dude ear is not real. At least I never noticed it on any other shows that he was on. Druggy Isaiah said, I think his ear is real. Jet Set Turner say I give the episode a 7 out of 10. Okay. Um, BB Gaines, you lo I love that scene, but I am corny. <laughs> it made me laugh. It made me laugh. Um... But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I guess they got to have somebody get killed in every episode and they can't make it the main characters or it won't be anybody left by the end of the show. So, I get it. Uh, let me see. I'm going to check out if that uh, if uh, his ear is really like that. If his ear is really like that, then... Um, Chris Lofton, I don't think his ear is really like that. Not that it's that important. It's really not. But if it is, then I won't bring it up and uh, I won't give credit. Now, what ear is it that's messed up? I think it's the left ear, right? You all let me know. What ear is messed up? The left or the right? I'm going to go and pull it up on the picture while y'all type it in. Is it the left or the right ear? It's the left ear, right? All right, I got a picture. I already solved the case. Okay? Here go the ear. It's his left ear. 
That's his left ear, right? Left ear. Okay, so that's his left ear. I already cracked the case in real time. Here we go. <laughs> now let's look at him without the topic. Look, this is his his face. His left ear is not messed up. Y'all see that? His left ear is not messed up. So that's not his real ear. That ear is gross. <laughs> that ear is gross and that is part of the show because you can see right here that his left ear is not messed up so there you have it that's all makeup Chris Lofton doing good man I'll just say Chris Lofton doing real good <laughs> this is on the show Ballers and he did a good job on Ballers. I like that show. That's the first time I saw him. And uh, he did a damn good job on Ballers. And Chris Lofton doesn't have anything wrong with his ears, man. And there's a close-up picture right there. So, you know. Shout out to Chris Lofton, man. Zoom in. <laughs> uh... You say druggy Isaiah, he the only one who talks like he from Chicago. He definitely does talk like it. He he from Chicago. And also I believe uh I think Diamond is from Chicago as well, but I'm not sure. I think he is though. Let's see. But uh, you know, yeah, he did a good job on this show so far. He did a good job on Ballers. He was in Hardball with Keanu Reeves. He been acting for a while. I think Michael B. Jordan was in Hardball also. So, um, you know, he definitely did a good job, man. But uh, let's see. Diamond... They don't have diamond listed on here as much. Let's see. Isaac Keys. Let's see. Isaac Keys. Uh, let me see. Where is Isaac Keys from? I'm looking now. It says. Doesn't say. Uh, let me look. Read this. Isaac Keys. St. Louis, Missouri. Isaac Keys is from St. Louis, Missouri. So, you know. There he is. So, you know. Patrick Peterson. Liliana kind of thick in the thighs. Yeah. She was definitely looking very good. Uh, how many men would overlook a lady with a scar on their face like that? Um, like Liliana would and you would still like to be with Liliana. Put a put a one uh put a just put a one in the comments if you want to still date and Liliana. I'm talking about date and be with her seriously, not talking about having some some loving on the side. Put a two if you wouldn't date Liliana because of the scar. You know, it's 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 understandable, but it is kind of shallow as well, you know. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. A lot of people won't date people for very superficial reasons in life. And, uh, you know, if, hey, it's every time you see her, it make you think maybe she was uh, a drug dealer or you know, Leatherface or Freddy Krueger or something. I don't know if it say more about her or you or what, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> Let's see. We got David Williams said he still holla. Alazir Ben Israel. Ray Negron said so. Marcus Willis. B.B. Gaines. Ray, you put uh, one a bunch of times. Ray really like a Liliana boy, Adam. Patrick, seemed like a lot of people. Nobody said 
No. Pretty Girls Loves Trap Content says she's still cute. Nothing Revlon, Cover Girl, or Mac can't fix. Well, man, that stuff came a long way. I ain't going to say that she, can't, she ain't still cute, but I didn't know it could fix that. But, you know, it's probably fixable with some type of plastic surgery or something today. It would probably still be a scar. She need like a lot of cocoa butter. <laughs> uh, Ray. No, but uh, you know. <laughs> Say if you balling, you can get the scar fixed for her with plastic surgery. BB Gaines. That's what I was thinking too. You know, if it was something that bothered her and she wanted that, then there ain't nothing wrong with that. I get it. So, you know. Um, <laughs> Ray say he gonna slide in the DMs tonight. Well, lucky for you, if you do, that's not real. So you might be all right if she, if she slides back. <laughs> Cocoa butter. Anyway, um, you know, so overall, this episode, I like it. It was pretty good. What would you all rate this episode? Y'all let me know in the comments. Uh, what would y'all rate it? Um, like I say, I would give it an eight. Um, overall, I think that the, the story is progressing pretty good. Um, Tommy, he might start to, uh, to get with the Flynn's family daughter um, and see what's going on with her. He also brought Gloria to his house, which may end up being the downfall of their relationship because she probably end up popping up over there, getting involved with something or seeing something that's going to end up getting her hurt down the road. And uh, I don't know. As far as Tommy working with the daughter behind the back of the Flynn's and, you know, probably backfiring. She's saying that, uh, you know, she she ready to do this and all he got to do is, you know, work with her. She got some stuff that will kick his teeth in, you know. Well, we'll see what happened. But uh, Big Daddy Flynn, he, he stuck to doing things his way. He don't like people doing things behind his back, which you're still doing in my city with this shite. <laughs> um, I just watched All About the Benjamins again today. It was on cable. He was in that. He looked a lot younger and a lot slimmer, but he was in that. I mean, it was 20 years ago, to his credit, you know, but... uh We'll see what's up, man, and how this play off. I'm interested to see what happens with this storyline. Rojas ain't forget about you barbecuing his boys, though, Tommy. So, uh, you know, we'll see what's up. Pretty girl loves trap content. I agree. You can't let her know where you lay your head. Tommy Cocky, that's right. You never know, because we also learned that she really is feeling uh, the young Flynn because he didn't ball her mama a, a headstone and, and uh, you know, they promised to get married and run away together and all kind of stuff. And and so who knows what's going to happen and where, where it may go. But uh, she may end up having to be put in a situation to, to let that information slide. And Tommy, you know, that firehouse might get real hot. So we'll see. Um, I don't know. Got to always protect where you lay your head. Especially in the dope game. And he had Liliana at his house too. So he got two people that may have information that can come back to get his ass in there. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I don't know. Um, 
Jamari Riddick and Claudia Gay. <clears throat> Claudia is is gay. At least she's with the Chinese lady, the Asian lady. But that doesn't mean that she may not like men also. Um, although she was with the alderman, and we see that she been paying off the alderman, he did have a lot of comments about them sleeping together, so maybe they have slept together before, or maybe he uh, just don't have any game and don't know how to talk to women because he was definitely very cocky and saying a lot of uh a lot of stuff you know to her as if uh you know they may have had done something before so i don't know we'll see yeah i'm with kendall she might be by so i wouldn't put it past her um we'll see I know she definitely loved that drug. And we also learned about that drug. That it was uh, supposed to be some type of diet drug. That has the same structure as cocaine. And basically that's what that is. And her friend, uh, the girlfriend of hers, is the one that has the access to it. And is able to get the supply or whatever. So, um, you know, that and it's legal, I believe she said. Um, so really, that's a win win for all of that stuff. We we don't know. So, you know. We'll see. Um. Savannah said, maybe Claudia is pansexual or trisexual. <laughs> I don't know about all of that. Ain't no telling what may be going on. I don't even know what a pansexual or trisexual is. Trisexual, I know that used to be a joke. What, try any sexual things? <laughs> now, if that's not a joke and that's real, I don't even know what that is. Um, but I don't know what a lot of stuff is, so it is what it is. Um, I never claim to know it all. All right. Um, shout out to everybody that's been a part of the channel membership. Um, definitely had a good time watching the episode tonight. Um, talking about the episode, um, last night trivia was good. Um, good time just chopping it up, talking with everybody. And, uh, you know, if you all are interested in joining the membership, uh, come on through, um, you get to hear a lot of stuff about the, uh, the behind the scenes of what goes on about, you know, YouTube and videos and all this other stuff. It's pretty fun, pretty interesting, um, and, uh, you know, I think that everybody normally, once they get to be a part of it, um, they they pretty much enjoy enjoy being a part of the membership. So come on through, join up. I appreciate it. And uh, also, you can hit me up on Cash App. I appreciate everybody that came through with the Super Chat. Um, here's a video for the Super Chat for tonight. Jesus Christ! Who's your friend? Oh, do you find me sexy? Oh, look at my titties! Oh, oh my titties! Ah! <laughs> All right, don't forget to put in the hashtag J More Reviews. I'm about to go ahead and uh, do the Cash App giveaway. I see people saying that the pan and the tribe both basically mean the same thing. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's funny. All right. We got 120, 22 people up in here. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, glad everybody came through. Chop it up about the show. Um, let's see what we got up in here. We got 36 entries out of 122. 
Don't forget, if you ain't already, put in the hashtag JMore Reviews so that you can get a chance to win some cash. Um, and, of course, you can also put it in other platforms. So you can put it in on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube and uh, make it happen. What's up, Ray? I appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you, brother, for the support. Definitely appreciate it. Got a video right here. Spreading love up in here. Got a little money for you. <laughs> Don't forget to type it in. J More Reviews. Definitely type it in all together. Hashtag J More Reviews. Just like on the screen. Got to put it in as one word. No spaces in between. No spaces. Make it all one word, just like on the screen. And then you entered in. All right. We got 42. Let's get up to 50 people up in here. And when we get to 50, we can make it happen. Let's go. Let's see what we got. We got 43. Come on. We got 44. We got Kendall putting it in. We got Lo Load Fo. Low Fo putting it in. Miss Jocelyn putting in the hashtag J Moore Reviews. Let's get that going. We got six more people. We got 115 watching. Come on, we got Gina putting it in. That's what's up, Gina. Five more. Let's go. It's Maya. Put it in. Savannah said it made shrimp Alfredo. That's what's up. You ain't share none, but it's all good. Stephanie Brandon put in the hashtag J More Reviews. Rakeem Bo. That's what I'm talking about. Gregory Josie. Putting it in, hashtag. That's what I'm talking about. Patrick Peterson, Jamari Riddick, Tamika's Den, Kelly Lee. What's up, Kelly? That's my girl, Kelly. Damian Robinson, London the Dolly, Crystal, Moochie coming through with Moochella, came to hang with the fella. That's what's up. Sabrina Bonsu. We need one more person. Crystal. That's what's up, Crystal. Came through with the with the 50 piece. That's what I'm talking about. Alright. Now people still can put it through, but I'm about to press the button. So if you are gonna put it through, you better hurry up. Cause on the count of three, I'm about to press it. One, two, three. D Weave in the building. D Weave wins. Boy, didn't you win before? D Weave be winning, man. You need to go to Vegas, man. D Weave. D Weave, you still here? Weavy. D Weavy, you in the building? Type here if you ain't fall asleep. Uh, okay, it's your first time. All right, my bad. I thought I saw you win before. All right. Miss Crafty said you did. No, nah, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> All right. Savannah said she need a weave. That's what's up. The weave is here in the building. All right, you can hit me up um, on Discord. And uh, I can make it work for you. I appreciate you. Shout out to Ray. Appreciate you, man. Battle Rap Discord Champion. We're going to see what's up this coming Friday. You got to defend your title. Ray won the first ever Discord Battle Rap. 
Shout out. We gonna see what's up. We got Young Slim coming for that top spot for the Battle Rap Showdown Championship. So we'll see what's up. Um, we do have a lot of fun, talk, joke, even argue a little bit about TV shows and stuff, but it's all good, man. Um, it's fun in Discord. And I'm almost up to 100 members for the channel. So, you know, I don't know. I might have to figure out some way to do something, man, for when we get 100 members, man. Some way to celebrate. But I'll think of something. We'll, we'll come up with something. But uh, I'm going to get ready to get up out of here and play one more video for for Brother Ray coming through with the with the you know what I'm saying super chat here we go one two that's it that's it that's it with your arms now that's it that's it move <laughs> that's it that was Diamond when he first got into prison. He was trying to, you know, get, get time off for of good behavior. Yeah, I don't know, man. He, he didn't get out no sooner, so I don't know if that was it. <laughs> All right. All right, man. <laughs> Ray, you funny, man. All right, man. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Definitely was fun. I appreciate having over a hundred some people uh, come through at this time uh, to get the first reaction. And uh, shout out to all the people participate in the Cash App giveaway. Um, Seem to be a success so far. So uh, I keep doing it a little bit longer and see how it goes. <clears throat> so we'll see. I also got some new merch coming that I've been working on. Um, everybody in the Discord has already got a chance to check it out and see some of the designs. So, so far, it seems everybody think it's, it looks pretty good. And I may have some, some merch giveaways and things and some discount codes and, and all kind of stuff coming for everybody. So, be on the lookout real soon by the end of this month beginning of the next month it should be it should be ready hot off the presses <laughs> all right man everybody be safe have a good morning great day good evening all that good stuff rolled into one and i'll see y'all on the next one man peace and y'all take care i'm out deuces the J mother, very best of you. Tell them, none can contest me, don't.